Good morning or well, good afternoon from Hong Kong. Very well, thanks, Maria. How are you? Very well, very well. Yeah, you're coming to the end of your day, aren't you? And we're just starting. Good. Now, Paul, you've got something very interesting to talk about today. But first of all, can you introduce yourself so that um, people know all about your role and what you're up to? Can indeed. So my name's, I'm Paul Redmayne. Um, I'm the head of private sales for jewellery here at Philips, um, based in Hong Kong, been in Hong Kong for nine years. So my background is a retail background, 20 years in retail, started at Cartier in London in 97, uh, worked with Harry Winston in Paris, LVMH in Paris. I was there for seven years and I've been in Hong Kong since uh, January 2012. Um, and so, so, so from, a, from a total um, jewellery background from the retail side and you yeah. have a new concept called Flawless. Yeah, so, um, so we started talking, Philips and I started talking, and uh, Philips was super interested in coming up with this new concept of having, obviously, entering the private sale arena, but doing things slightly differently. Um, and we've spoken a lot about there's a, there's a hybrid pinnacle where the magic happens between the commercial sense of retail and then the knowledge um, of, of auction. And so that's the, that's the area we're really trying to explore. So we're very well known as a contemporary uh, designer and contemporary house. Um, and so we're really pushing the contemporary design field, but we're also doing 20th century, 21st century. So pieces that we're selling and sourcing on Flawless, everything from Cartier, Art Deco, going right through to single stones, uh, 10 carat vivid pinks, five carat vivid blues, etc., etc. So and, and that brings us to perfectly to the first chapter of Flawless, which is none other than Sean Lee. Then Sean Lee, indeed, yeah. So we were, this came about, I've known Sean for 10 years, so we were introduced by mutual friends back in London. Um, always been a massive fan of Sean's. Um, and I love his design aesthetic. I love what he does, the way he does it, and just him. Mm -hmm. He's such an engaging, magnetic, warm, happy, gregarious person. Um, and uh, yeah, so we very high profile, hasn't he? Because he designed Princess Beatrice's engagement ring. Um, Megan is seen wearing his earrings. Um, Isabella Blow and people like Kate Moss have all worn his jewelry. He's very much sitting between fashion and fine jewelry, so that makes him quite unique. Yeah, and it's interesting when you speak to him as well, he, he talks very much in, in fashion vernacular. Um, he'll talk about the silhouette of, of, of pieces um, and obviously his long term collaboration and friendship um, from the age of 22 years old. They were both 22, himself and Alexander McQueen. Mm. And McQueen was such an inspiration for Sean and, and Sean talks so passionately and so effusively about McQueen and, and, and how McQueen essentially set him up and just said, look, you can do anything. Um, whatever yeah. you want to do, don't be limited by materials, don't be limited by, um, by concepts. Um, and, and Sean's really taken that and run with it. Yeah, and you've got a little bit, we've got a little video um, that you made, didn't you, of, um, of uh, Sean presenting the project, but we can't put the sound on, but if I just play it, then we can talk over it, can't we? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is very typical of his jewellery, isn't it? It's sort of, um, he calls it fierce, but still quite vulnerable, right? Yeah, and his, he has this, so it's, it's, it's a lot of duality. So it's very, it's sensual and he plays a lot. I mean, he, he harks back. So he's just come out with this book to launch, uh, to, to mark his 21 years in, in the business. Um, and he talks then about as a young child, he would see his mother apply her makeup before she was going out um, for the evening. And she would, she would put the mascara on and then she'd take a needle and she'd put the needle through her eyelashes and she would just uh, uh, pull it out. And he said there was such a, a danger, a beauty and a danger juxtaposition. And that really marked him. And, and you see it in these pieces, like they're very jagged, they're very spiky, um, mm -hmm. they're very primal, but they're so sensual, so feminine, um, so simple, yet so complex. He, he's such a, I mean, it, it, sums, it sums Sean up perfectly. Yeah, it is a very fine line, isn't it? And um, Sean um, was, telling me last time I spoke to him that uh, working with McQueen um, also gave him this idea of gender fluid because uh, he approached it like a couture house. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, just for men or just women because McQueen went well beyond that, didn't it? it very dramatic. And that you can see that in Sean's work and also in his daring. So I think that was a very fruitful partnership, wasn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. And it just ripples through. I mean, everything, if you see these pieces, the inspiration is taken for almost every piece is taken from a McQueen season, be it the spring, summer, be it whatever it happens to be going right through from, from the 90s going through to the, the 2000s. Yeah, um, absolutely. And they were such, you know, it, sort of, it went beyond being a, a friendship. Um, and they were just, yeah, they were, they were so fused. And he says, you know, like the, the first piece that we're, we'll talk about, the Armis, he said that when he first met McQueen, he was very shy um, and Sean, from his background growing up in London, he, he needed, he knew that he was different and he needed an armor. Um, and so these, these uh, bangles and these earrings, and, and it's all about how they work together and Sean wanting to protect. And um, there's a lot of that that comes through in his work. Definitely. And just um, tell us a little bit about this sale. So um, there are 21 pieces. 21 right? pieces. Yeah, 21 pieces in total. So we've launched with 12 pieces. Um, we've got a, a, another five coming online in November. Um, they're being finished and uh, photographed now. Um, and then we've got the remainder coming through in the new year. Um, and they're incrementally going up in, in value. So we start here, these are 12 pieces. They go from around 11,000 US dollars up to 200,000. And then the next tranche we jump up from about 50,000 US up to uh, half a million and then we start going into the uh, the million and the, the real high jewelry couture pieces as Sean calls them. Um, the and, yeah and so uh, yeah it's like the firework display the big uh, the big crescendo at the end um, and so they're available online on the Philips uh, web page on Flawless um, currently they're in Southampton so Philips we've taken a pop-up in Southampton in New York um, and so okay, the exhibition the there is in the Hamptons, not, yeah. not, not in the south of England. Not, not, not in, near Bognor Regis. No, no, slightly, slightly more glamorous. So over in the, over in the Hamptons, we've taken a, a lovely pop-up and we've got the pieces there. So they've been there for, for 10 days and the exhibition finishes on Sunday. Right. And then and the pieces then come back to London. Yeah, you were explaining that the pieces are all one-offs and they're totally exclusive to Philips. Yeah, so everything is either from Sean's archives or it's pieces that we've commissioned and we've worked on, uh, worked on together. Um, so these initial pieces are mainly uh, archived with a couple of new pieces. The next batch um, are essentially the, the new pieces, new creations. Oh, well, they're excited to see those then. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, and again, and they're in different materials as well. So we see that Sean plays a lot. So we've got some here that are palladium, we've got silver, we've got white gold, we've got ceramic pieces coming up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very much, it, it echoes Sean's background and, and how he trained, um, right. traditionally trained, um, and, and how and, he's taken things. And um, interesting as well for uh, fans of Sean Lee, just to um, clarify that he had an auction with Sotheby's in New York in December 2017. And this is different uh, for several years. Yeah, months. so that was his, so uh, what he did with Sotheby's, that was his personal Alexander McQueen archive. Um, so those are the pieces that Sean himself owned from his time with Alexander McQueen. These pieces are his commercial pieces. Um, they are archive pieces and we're doing an exhibition um, in London and New York. So it was scheduled this year for London and New York. We're doing an exhibition, obviously COVID permitting next year, and we will be taking some archive pieces as well. Like uh, he made this contramundum glove um, for Daphne Guinness. We've got a little beetle brooch from uh, that Damien Hurst owns. And there's quite a, there's a lot of pieces from his collector um, clients. So we're, we're mixing and matching. There's an exhibition element and there's the sales element as well. Fantastic. Shall we look at the first piece? Yeah. Let's get that up. So you can look at that instead of me. There you are. So these are, these are the Armist cuffs um, that I mentioned earlier. So they're mm -hmm. sold uh, ideally for Sean. He would like the person who purchased them to purchase both of them because he sees them as being worn. Um, it's the armor. Um, it harks back to when he was growing up and what he needed and what he felt that he wanted as protection. And the same with Alexander McQueen as well. He said Alexander McQueen was actually very, very shy and they connected on that level. They were both out at these parties and going clubbing together. Um, but essentially they were two kindred spirits in that they were actually uh, quite shy and they, they knew that they were um, slightly different and, and they needed to band together. Um, yeah. So these are these yeah these are the the arm is the armor collection, right? And and like you said, they're all on the website now, um, and it's not bidding. They are all fixed prices. So yeah, it's fixed prices, fixed prices. Mm -hmm. So so no bidding. So when they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, 
no walk right. from this time. <laughs> Good. And then uh, the next piece we have are the earrings. The so these are these are the matching earrings and again here you see the contours the silhouette as Sean would say and those pieces there the, the top parts or the front parts they can actually be worn separately so you can wear just the tops on their own or you mm -hmm. can wear them with the more dramatic plunge down the back as well or you could wear them mixed to match couldn't you one of each yeah yeah and that's a lot of that is what uh, it's what Sean does too so he'll we'll see later the statement hook. So it's very, they're very large pieces. I mean, these, they're about seven centimeters. Um, it's quite hard to see from this video to get an idea of how, how so large like they that. are and the sizes, but they're quite, yeah, yeah. Pretty big, yeah. And um, the next piece that we have here is, um, has color, which Sean isn't particularly known for color, but when he does use it, wow. Yeah, and so this is, uh, this is the Aurora collection. Um, and so it's named after Aurora Borealis. Um, and what Sean's done here, so it took him over a year to come up with the concept of fusing three rings together. Um, so the rings can be worn individually or they can be worn intermeshed together. And again, it's all down to that form, as we see, it's, it's quite jagged, but it's very harmonious as well. And that's, that's a motif that you see repeated a lot in Sean's work. So there's this gentleness, there's a gentle serenity to it. But then if you look at it, it's quite striking and it's quite, uh, it, it's, it, it's strong. It's strong and, and potentially harsh, but then the overall look is very feminine and very gentle. Yeah, it's, it's those tapered edges on the, on, the, the, uh, on the various jewels you can see very clearly on this ring. And to do that, that well and that perfect is a real show of his craftsmanship because he was a classically trained jeweler. He was, he was making tiaras for uh, Bond Street jewelers and you know, that would sell to royalties at the age of 18. And I remember him saying that much like um, Leah Alexander McQueen, he was also classically trained in Savile Row tailoring. So they had this heritage, they had this past knowledge, which they then took to a whole new dimension. And I think you can see it here because that's you know, a very beautifully made ring. Yeah. Yeah, and, he's, and there's another one that we've got coming up later that we'll, uh, we'll see in different colors. So Shall he's I get done this. Up next? No, let's get that well, one he's up done this next. series as well in, uh, with diamonds only. Oh, that one. Um, oh, there we go. There we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the same ring, but with amethysts and rhodolite. And, and rhodolite, yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are, these are in white gold. So some of, as I was saying earlier, some of the pieces, so there's some in palladium, there's, there's some in uh, uh, silver. Uh, there's some in silver that are coated um, in 18 karat gold, so Vermeil, um, gold plated, and, uh, and these are 18 karat white gold and 18 karat yellow gold. Right, and this, for example, is, is a design that um, Seanlean has made before, but the combination of stones is exclusive to you. Exactly, that yes. right, yeah? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Good, good. And uh, I would imagine that Sean is, Sean is perhaps better known in in the UK, in the US, Europe in general. Well, what about in, in um, Hong Kong and Asia? How, how well known is he there? Yeah, he's known because, of, because he cuts between fashion and jewelry. He's not an, an out and out jeweler. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's known for that. He actually won an award um, in Beijing with uh, Bazaar Jewelry Magazine in, I think it was 2013, 2014. Okay. And he won Best International Design he won Best International Designer of the Year, so he flew, um, he flew in and he flew up to Beijing for, um, for that. Um, and he was stocked here. He's still stocked, I believe, in Lane Crawford here. Um, he did have a store here for a couple of years. Um, so he's, he's known out here, but he's definitely better known um, in Europe and the US. Yeah, and as well as perhaps people have seen his more commercial designs, but his bespoke work is a very important part of his business as well. And I would imagine that talks to your clientele. We're yeah. looking for something quite unique. Yeah, and it's a, that's the part that Sean really loves as well. I mean, it's where yeah. his creative juices just kick in. Um, but what's very good about him is he doesn't he doesn't prescribe to the client. He doesn't say, right, you'd like something bespoke. If if a client gives him a stone, he won't say, right, this is what I'm doing with this stone. Take it or leave it. He will have a conversation, um, and it's always two sided with Sean. 
um, and he will say, okay, what's, what are the influences in your life? What would you like? What's important to you? And it's a, it's a whole, whole, whole process because for him it's important. Yes, they are buying a Sean Neen jewel, but they're the person who's wearing it. So if they only wear white gold, he's not going to design them something in rose gold. Um, well, so he's yeah. got that, it's that human touch. He's, he's, very, uh, he's very approachable. Well, a Princess Beatrice obviously thought so. Exactly, exactly. And they, they, so they work together. Well, obviously she didn't work together, but uh, um, her her husband, um, Sean, uh, Sean worked together and, and it was a collaborative effort. Absolutely. Now I'm going to show you something incredibly feminine, which is um, this other side of Sean that you were mentioning. Earlier. Yeah, the cherry blossom. Um, so these are, these are cherry blossom cuffs. So they're um, obviously the cherry blossom season in Japan. And this is another motif of Sean's where it's nature and it's this, the juxtaposition of life and death and birth and regrowth. Um, and he's, he's travels a lot. Um, but this, this one came from when he was seeing the, 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 the cherry blossom and how people in Japan would travel right into the countryside for hours and hours and hours for this tiny, tiny short season just to view and witness the cherry blossom. And everything would come and it would all look amazing and then it would just fall off the trees and it would die. Um, and it, Sean's taken that, frozen it in time. Um, and, and those are two cuffs, aren't they? Those are two cuffs. So these are sold as a pair. Um, and these are, these are the, these, I think these are the least expensive in the, these are 11, 11,000 from memory. 11,300. 11, and I yeah. remember you telling me, Paul, that these are actually, they're silver with gold vermeil on top. Yeah. Um, and so Sean, so the, the silver in Sean, that's how he started. Um, and he started, well, Alexander McQueen initially approached him and said, right, Sean was trained as a goldsmith and was doing his apprenticeship as a goldsmith. And Alexander McQueen said to him, come and make some jewelry for me for my runway shows. Let's do it in brass. And Sean was horrified. He said, brass, I don't do brass. I'm a goldsmith. I can't um, do that, and Alexander, yeah. <laughs> Alexander McQueen said, look, you can apply your skill to any uh, metal. Um, and so they started working. There were budget constraints at the time and they started working um, in silver and then they started graduating up. So Sean does a lot of retrospectives, a lot of throwbacks to what he was originally doing, mixing and matching. And this brings us perfectly well to this piece, which is quite a famous piece. Yeah, so this is the, this is the quill choker. Um, so initially the first um, iteration of this was actually in, in silver. So this is uh, silver, but gold plated. And the first iteration was in 1997. So it was actually the first bespoke piece that Sean ever created. And it was for Isabella Blow. So she was at the time the fashion um, editor of the Sunday Times. Um, knew Sean socially, knew Alexander McQueen, um, hung out with them and said, right, I want you to make me a striking anklet. I want a Sean Lean anklet. And Sean, always fascinated with history, um, and as you hinted at earlier, he used to um, renovate uh, 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 antique jewellery. Um, and so in Victorian times, uh, prostitutes used to identify themselves by wearing anklets. And Sean, devilish humour that he has, thought this would be a fantastic thing to do. And so this is where the anklet came from. And it was actually in this design, in the tusk design. Um, and then he's brought it into this, uh, this full, very imposing choker um, and again it's very jagged it's very it looks borderline aggressive but somehow mm. it's so mesmerizingly smooth and gentle as well so yeah, the and that, stunning, that, went, stunning um, piece. that was on one of um, the queen's uh, runway shows wasn't it yes yes yeah and i think that's when you see how how um, the queen was able to um tap into sean's incredible design talent and his skills of um making jewellery, but then transform them in scale, in daring, in materials. And that's when you get something as dramatic as that. It really was a, a, a positive collaboration. Yeah. And I mean, you, and you see the centre quill. I mean, it's, it's very, it's huge. Yeah. Um, and these were from, so Sean, he, he was travelling. He, he told me once, it was, it's a great story. He was travelling and he found these uh, porcupine quills um, and he picked them up. Um, and the guide who he was with said, why are you picking those up? And he said, I don't know, I'll, they'll be useful sometime. Um, and that's when he made these, uh, these gorgeous earrings, which are actually the cover of the book of these porcupine quills. And so everything came from, uh, came from there and stemmed from there. And then it was the tusk iteration that came through after that. Yeah. And that, that as you mentioned, those big earrings, here is another version of them. Yeah. 
So these are the fan, the fan feather earrings. So these are, these are the magpie earrings. Um, so the first ones he did were from McQueen, I think it was 2003. Um, and he did those in parrot feathers. So they were very striking, very colorful in these, uh, these green and yellow parrot feathers. The same, same volume, same size, set in silver. Um, and then Sean's redone these in, uh, in magpie, the pika pika, as magpie. they are. <laughs> and they are so dramatic. And again, um, you can just see these, how they, well, you can actually see images of the parrot ones on the models when they went down the, the runway. And McQueen was so dramatic. He was so theatrical. And together they created these amazing designs that, as we can see, translate into different feathers, different materials, and have an appeal that is beyond jewelry and yeah. beyond fashion and is something that appeals to somebody who really understands what Shawnee and McQueen were doing together. Yeah, and it's such, they're such statement pieces. I mean, they're, mm. so, they're so iconic. Um, and he's made some other, in the interim, he's made some other earrings that are far smaller, but still very, well, smaller for Sean, but still mm. very imposing. Um, and they're, they're about so big, and they've got, uh, they have a, a load of very colorful feathers inside them. Um, and it's that play, it's that playing around with materials, playing around with different, uh, different materials and not sticking to your traditional white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, platinum, um, and just going out there because it's, it's an adornment. Um, and it's the same with the tusk, the inspiration for the tusk. You know, he, he, you talk to him and he talks about from the, the get-go, from the beginning of time, the hunter-gatherers were going around and the trophy that they would take would be the tusk of the animal they killed or the tooth and they'd use it as an amulet. And mm -hmm. again, there's all these themes that come through, come through with Sean. Yeah, I know we, um, he was telling me that if he hadn't been a jeweler, he would have been an archeologist because mm. he loves finding old things, digging up, exploring. And if you go to his, um, his studio, he has a whole shelf and it's full of all fascinating artifacts that he's collected and it, that sort of seeps into his work. And it's the beauty of Sean as well. He's so, he's so inquisitive. He's still so enthusiastic. He's, he's, not, he's not sort of jaded by anything. He's just got that, that boyish, impish curiosity about everything. And he's just, just well, devouring I, I think he's watching. <laughs> Is he there, watching? Sean? Hi, Sean. <laughs> yeah, and he's always, always willing to have a laugh, which um, I like. He, absolutely. <laughs> and you see his serious. humor comes through. His humor comes through in the pieces yeah. as well. Absolutely. And um, another one of the pieces that is currently on your website is what we were talking about earlier, this, the hook and the, that little very fine edge between absolute beauty and danger. It does. I mean, it, it looks like a weapon. Um, and it, and this is imposed, this is big, this is eight and a half centimeters. I think this one is, I mean, it's, it's really, and it's just meant to be worn just as a, as a one-off. There aren't two of them. And I think that's the beauty of Sean as well. You know, he'll, he'll create one earring. He won't create a pair of earrings because aesthetically something this size, it's so much more dramatic and so much more impactful just as one rather yeah. than having, um, rather than having two. Absolutely. And, um, We've got another um, pair here that are slightly different, but again, they are um, like the other pair. You wear them through the front and the back of the ear. Yeah. That's quite um, tribal, and, isn't it? Uh, completely. And that's what, and so the, one of the juxtapositions that Sean does, he juxtaposes, it's the duality again. It, it's urban versus tribal. It's, it's uh, art deco versus super modern. Um, and some of the pieces we've got, uh, there's a pair of earrings that uh, we had a sneak preview of coming up and they're beautiful. It's similar to this design, mm -hmm. but they've got this art deco touch with them. Um, they're ceramic, so it looks, it, it's like the onyx. It's like that. Uh, it's very, very art deco, but very tribal and very colorful at the same time. Yeah. And um, now Sean was uh, saying to me that he is very much inspired by London. He's very much of London. And... Um, when he was younger, I suppose, going out in the 80s, 90s, and absorbing this crazy time where everything was possible and absorbing all these influences. And it, it is synthesized in these jewels, I think. They are very much London, but with all these yeah. global references. Yeah, and it's, and it's him, it's his curiosity. He's a traveler, mm -hmm. like every time, as you said, every time he goes somewhere, he picks something up, he'll go to the museums and he'll, he takes his time to find out things. I mean, you look at uh, Bouchon. So Bouchon approached him to design a necklace for their 150th anniversary. Um, and Sean went to Paris, had lunch there, and he said, well, can I see the archives? And they said, no, we want something brand new. So it's up to you. And as he was leaving, he saw this photo on the wall 
Um, and it turns out it was uh, the Countess of Castiglione, um, and she'd been sent uh, to appease, uh, to, to ask Napoleon if uh, the, the war should not happen. She ended up becoming Napoleon's mistress. She lived in the uh, apartments above uh, Boucheron, and as she got older, her, her looks disappeared and withered, and she lived in absolute darkness, completely in the black. Um, Sean then went away, found this super fascinating, um, did some research and found a, a flower called Queen of the Night, South African flower, and uh -huh. the petals only come out, it, it, it opens at night. And so it's absolutely nothing during the day, it opens at night. And so he designed this necklace to do exactly this called Queen of the Night. And that's Sean, that's him. It's, it's his, he's rooted in history, but he's creating something that is so modern. And as uh, someone has written somewhere, it's the antiques of tomorrow. Um, it's it's yeah. it's beautiful. It's and the story the, the stories that go with each piece they're so they're so interesting. Absolutely, and I think this um, these earrings have something. It's, are these, is this the pair that have something like uh, nine no a hundred diamonds? Or is that the one, Paul? That I mean, um, I appreciate the, the the skill in making these. Let me see. These are yes. Yeah, so eight point five six carats. These are. Yeah, which is uh, a lot of diamonds. diamonds. So it's got a, a thousand, more than a thousand diamonds That's on it. Them. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And then we um, we haven't really spoken about the fact that Shawnee makes jewellery for men as well. He does indeed. Yes. Kind of get examples. So a lot of a lot of his pieces. So he's he's very much unisex. This is a saber cuff, um, and again, you've got the saber coming through, and the way it just dissects and it cuts through. So you've got this. It looks. It looks army, it's bellicose, it's army-esque, mm -hmm. but then it's just got that lovely silhouette to it as well. It's very gentle, it's very, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a knife, it's like a knife blade, but there's something that's very, you get transfixed by it. Yeah, like um, a warrior. set in, this, in the leather, yeah. And uh, yeah, as Sean, I know, does um, quite a lot of commissions for men, bespoke work, and he says that men are, are great clients because they really know what they want and they come to him because they want something they can't find off the shelf. So they're very discerning in his view, what his customers are, his bespoke customers. And um, uh, being a man, he obviously has the sensitivity to create for men. And I think you can see that in this cup here. Yeah, and the sapphire, um, the sapphire ring as well um, is, is unisex in inverted commas. So he wants, that he, that's intended. That. Yeah. yeah, this one. So this is a this this is in, set in platinum, um, and this is sapphire. So it's sapphire pave, and the center stone is a ten and a half carat Sri Lankan um, sapphire. Amazing um, sapphire as well. Oh, this is gorgeous. It's yeah. gorgeous, um, and and the ring again. It's a unisex ring, so it's kind of like the um, it's like a signet ring. It's that kind of style, and it's got something about the shape of of, of being a signet ring, but then it's very feminine. If you want it to be feminine, it's very feminine as well. And it's called the shield, which is very much describes that um, jewelry as armor, as you know, defending yourself, protecting yourself. Yeah, in a very beautiful way. And and also, the, the, uh, Sean's use of color when he does use colors, they're very opulent. They're very saturated, aren't they? Yeah, he he hasn't opted because he obviously sapphires come in all colors, and he's opted mm -hmm. for the traditional, the blue sapphire. But he's adopted he he's opted for um, a very strongly saturated one with a strong color intensity, rather than a more watery blue. He's gone for a very bomb, strong, bold blue. Yeah, that's dramatic. I think that this is one of my favorite pieces. I have to say, yeah, that and the long single earring. <laughs> yeah, I love the I love the the choker. Big fan of the choker. I, I, absolutely, I suppose, yeah, if you wanted to have something absolutely Shawnee through and through, it would have to be the choker, wouldn't it? Such a statement. And yeah. you, imagine, you imagine wearing that choker in a room. There aren't two of them. <laughs> There's, no. Nothing's going to come close to it. Absolutely. I'm not sure how comfortable it would be if you had to um, look down to tie your shoelaces, but you'd have <laughs> someone help you with that. <laughs> I think there's just one more pair of earrings. We haven't looked at these yet, and these are a pair and identical. Yep, and these are these are in uh, in white gold. So again, these are the uh, the sabers, the tusks, um, and it's the same. It's the same aesthetic. So we see the similar vein coming up each time. Mm -hmm. um, super simple, but very very feminine in the curvature, but actually quite uh, quite ferocious as well. 
They're and very, large, very, very imposing. Large. Again, we're all of these earrings, these drop earrings we're looking, we're talking about six, seven, eight centimeters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they are dramatic, that's for sure. Fantastic. Well, I think everyone can now go and choose their favorite piece on your website. So it's at Philips backslash flawless. Is that right? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Philips.com. And then you go into private sales. And then there's actually there's a dedicated page to Sean Lean. So on the homepage of Philips.com, private sales, and then go down and there's, uh, there's Sean Lean um, x Philips. And, and you can see see all of these pieces. There. And, and you said we're gonna have four more pieces. Is that right in November? And then yeah, the final pieces yeah. in January. And then so the remainder yeah. are coming in in January. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Paul, for explaining that. Um, that well, was thank you. A great insight. You obviously know Sean very well, and you are from the world of jewellery. So that was really, really wonderful. Thank you, Paul. I'm a big fan. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maria. And then we've got our, um, so we're just, we've just finished the catalogue now. So our upcoming uh, Jewels and Jadeite sale is happening in Hong Kong, 28th of November. Fantastic. Well, good luck So we've got that coming up. So thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Keep well. Brilliant. Thanks, Maria. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.